Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Factorio, Bob's Angels, episode four. Uh, so yeah, I've done a tiny little bit in between episodes. It's never ever going to be very much. It's always going to be a little tidying up things. Uh, but yeah, looking at the map, there's a lot of red. Look at those big fields of uh, of death. But yeah, all I've done in between episodes is just move the bus down uh, like one uh, yellow underground belt. That's it. And I've laid out some ghost images uh, for the Bob's oars because uh, they're going to need to run down onto this sub bus, which will become more obvious later on. Uh, but yeah, we start clearing trees uh, for tree production. Basically, we're killing trees to grow trees, so it, it is in the tree's favor, but they are going to be imprisoned trees. But yeah, basically what this is, it's a sub bus for production of mainly Bob's materials and other materials that are needed on the main bus for producing actual things. So this is kind of like uh, resource uh, production, essentially. It's like a sub bus that has the ability to expand infinitely both down to the south for as many resources as you want and to the west for however much production of that resource is required. I think, I don't know why I do this. I think it stems from my first Bob's playthrough. I wanted to have because I didn't know what I was doing with Bob's, I wanted to have as much space as I wanted to expand the production of whatever item for however much of it I was using. So we start with placing the greenhouses. I collect some glass and some other materials for the production of those greenhouses and we head back down. I start laying it from east to west. I eventually realise that that's not going to be infinitely expandable uh, with the way that the sub bus is laid out. So I then take it down and start placing it the correct way. Uh, the only problem is this can only be 10 long. Well, it could be as long as you want, but the longer you make it, the longer it is until the sub bus actually starts. Uh, but we need wood to automate the basic circuit production and a few other bits and bobs that, that use wo uh, wood. Bits and bobs. <laughs> Not funny. So yeah, we start laying that out and I take a good look at the map because we need water for this thing. And the closest water is uh, right next to some biter bases, but we go for it anyway. There they are, uh, first sight of the biters in this, this playthrough. Uh, but we go for it. Hopefully they don't come and kill me yet. Uh, so we get the water back up. Uh, this is probably going to be new, moved at some point. Uh, I'm just laying it here now for the sake of it. But that's essentially where the sub bus is going to run to feed the main bus. Uh, I don't know if anyone else ever does it like this, but... Yeah, kind of, instead of the main bus having everything on it and being crazily long, uh, we can split off and produce a lot of things down here. To prevent certain things being run down the bus that don't really need to. Uh, I also extend the greenhouse area to 12 long instead of 10, so we have a total of 24 greenhouses per unit. So this can be copied and repeated out to the west as many times as we like for wood well as many times as we like until we hit the uh, the water to the west but that's pretty far away I don't think we'll ever get that far uh, but we will be uh, producing a lot of wood um, I don't like using it uh, to fuel power because it kind of seems counterproductive because these if you have enough of them do use quite a lot of power so you could be in this perpetual loop of growing trees to make power, but then you need more power to grow more trees. Uh, I also get lost in the menu trying to find the saplings. I eventually find it, but yeah, even at four times speed, that is a uh, considerably long time in the, uh, in the menu trying to find it. Uh, yeah, I keep running out of resources as well during this period, and I keep having to go up and, and find more. It does get a bit tedious, but again, at four times speed, it's, uh, it's not so bad for you guys. Uh, so we get the sapling assembler up and the wood buffer. Uh, the little chest will only pass saplings back on to the circuit and it'll filter wood up to the uh, large warehouse. I start placing these inserters, uh, but I realise halfway through uh, placing the left hand side that uh, they're all just exporting. There needs to be one input, one output, uh, and I realise this about now. So I start placing those properly. Bit of a silly mistake there myself. Uh, but yeah, this layout at the moment won't completely work properly. It will jam up eventually, but this is just to get it running. I need to work out 
how to get the priority of saplings from the greenhouses to be used over the ones in the uh, assembler, which is just a case of, of laying that uh, belt out in a certain way. I just didn't like having it in the weird wonky way I was trying, but I'll, I'll work that out at a later date. So we purge that and get that running and slaughter a load more trees, uh, which does seem a bit weird if you think about it, you know, killing trees to grow trees, but oh well, it's purged, it's starting to run. Just check there to make sure it does work, because I do need some wood for the uh, first level of circuit board production. But yeah, there's uh, should be enough wood in there for us to expand it. As we go up to the uh, temporary base again, I did cut off Saffrite into that main base in between episodes, because I didn't think I was going to use it, but I switched it back on again, because it is nice for belt still to be produced there, until it gets done on the main bus. So we get the wood on the sub bus, uh, ready for the uh, production of uh, various items down here. And for some reason I start with um, solder plate, which isn't actually needed until the second uh, level of circuits. But for some reason I always do this first, I don't know why. I think I like to get both the first and second level of circuits uh, being produced before I even set up science on the main bus. Don't know why. Guess it's just the order in which those things are made on the bus. Seem to have a, have a habit of planning things in advance. Uh, I also have a bit of a habit of forgetting to switch off the long-handed override in the Bob's mods, but yeah, I think I've said it before, I love the uh, Bob's mods adjustable, adjustable inserters, I think that's should be uh, should be something you should be able to do. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, we also leave a space between uh, each level of production. That's for beacons. Um, I find it personally fairly easy to plan out for beacons. Even if I'm not going to use them there, I have have the ability to place them later. Because if that sub bus is miles long and suddenly I want to go and squeeze in a row of beacons, you have to go and move everything or delete something and put it somewhere else, which I like to plan ahead for. Um, so we gather some more resources because uh, I'll just keep running out. I really need to make more of an effort to make sure I've got enough on me before I start recording. But yeah, get that going. Um, we uh, get the resin and uh, solder plates ready for solder production. Which, like I said a minute ago, is... Ah, and we get our first uh, biter attack. First biter attack there, which scares the crap out of me. I sort of think maybe it's a one-off, and then I realise it's going to be a constant flow. Luckily, I have some turrets on me and some ammunition. Uh, but yeah, I've been extremely lapsed on this subject, and now I'm paying the price for it. Because, uh, yeah, I've been a bit cheeky with rampant AI being on and not being attacked yet. And they just don't stop. I have to uh, completely pause my building and start dealing with uh, a constant attack of biters. Get some more turrets uh, crafting. Starting to run out of ammo rapidly. Uh, so we go up, collect some uh, resource. Good thing I did switch the Saffrite back on for the uh, temporary base because uh, I go and collect some more ammunition there. But yeah, this is going to be a big, big problem that I need to address in the next episode. Otherwise, this series is going to be extremely short because we're going to run out of resources before we even have the ability to get any more. Yeah, I, I carry on uh, with the building. Now I've got a few turrets to, to protect me. We do get attacked fairly regularly. This is because the rampant AI mod, even though the, re uh, the pollution isn't reaching the bases, biters are still out hunting for me. At least I believe that's the aspect of it. There may just be pissed off at the uh, the mass tree slaughter. Who knows? But yeah, a lot of red out there. Still haven't scanned a single patch of uh, sapphirite, which is extremely worrying. I spent quite a bit of time surveying the map in between recording and I cannot see diddly squat. There's some javolite down to the south, so that's probably what we're going to have to work for first, because we can get a good amount of iron ore from the... Did I say javolite? The yellow ore. Don't start doing this again, Ben. Don't start getting them wrong. It's just embarrassing. 
But yeah, we have the solder production uh, up and running now since that attack. Those uh, eight ghost tracks are for Bob's ores to come into the sub bus. I've kind of looked at an old design and worked out how much I need to input. We also place a radar to keep an eye on the biters. I also thin out the turrets a bit because another aspect of the rampant AI means they'll um, they'll just prod at defenses, they'll retreat and they'll move up or down to where there might not be turrets. So yeah, like I said, that's going to be a big problem uh, that I need to deal with next episode. I also realize these underground belts are one space too far over, which just is unacceptable. They have to be moved. <laughs> it's the base will cease to function unless that's sorted out, so we get those placed. This is just a little path for me to travel up and down the sub bus in a car and not crash into anything. Yes, there are some water pipes up there, but I'll move those later on. They're just temporary. And we get the board set up for the first level of circuits, and I completely forget the process in which they're made, so we get that laid out properly with the wood. It's just called wood, but yeah, the, the wooden plates for the uh, wooden circuit boards, I think is the proper name. That's one problem with doing post commentary. I have no control over my past self. I am forced to comment on uh, actions that have already been taken. I'm present me, he's past me, and then future me will edit this. It's a good, you know, working partnership, but there's a lack of communication between us. We can't immediately communicate. I can't tell him what to do. I can tell you what he's doing, to the best of my knowledge. Very easy to forget what I do in each bit, uh, but sometimes it does come back. But yeah, now we can actually start to lay out the main bus, which was the objective for this episode, but it's taken a bit longer than I expected. Now this is an hour's worth of gameplay uh, compressed down. That's one nice thing about this uh, recording style. We're only into the fourth episode, and uh, I feel like, you know, We've advanced a lot further than if I was doing 20 minutes of normal speed playthrough. All bits, some bits will be missed. Uh, or it's hard to see what's going on because of how fast it is. But I do try and do my best to explain what's going on. So here we're just laying out where the start of the main bus production is. I like to leave a big gap there. Those ghost images there are for the Bob's Oars sorting. Again, I'm spacing things out for the future, uh, so things don't have to be moved. It's always good to leave uh, more space than you need, so if you need a certain amount of space, uh, double it. Always leave more space than you need. Much better to have too much space. But yeah, I also, after those ghost images, like to have a large uh, logistic storage area. That's generally where the center, quotation marks there that you can't see, of the base will be, or factory, I shouldn't really call it a base, I don't know why I don't want to call it a base, but the factory, and for some reason this all has to be in line with the smelting, yeah, I think I might have OCD, but that's a diagnosis for another day, uh, we start to lay out the tinned copper wire uh, production, because for some reason that has to be first on the agenda of main bus production, I know it doesn't really, but for some reason Yet again, I can't explain past me, uh, uh, past me's actions. That, that's not very really good grammar, is it? I did talk about in previous episode bussing dogs and copper wire, but I'm still trying to decide whether I'm actually going to bother. I might have an idea, uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, it might trigger a few people. I don't know. It's early days. Uh, but yeah, we get the power laid out for the tin copper wire production. Get that powered. Uh, lovely messy basic power poles. Gotta love a good messy pole layout. Uh, extend the bus to get the tin in. Uh, but yeah, we get the underground belts laid out. Finally get that producing its product. Yeah, is that right? Yeah? You gonna carry on? Good lad, good lad. Yeah. Oh yeah, like I said, I have no control over him. Uh, so then we get the basic or at least we try and get the basic circuit production up and running, but we can't because we get attacked to the north now. It's uh, it's getting worse. And you can see on the mini-map there's a, a new base popped up nearby. So we get some turrets placed. Uh, we try and reduce the size of the rubite mining uh, and get some Mark IIs put in. And then we go and try and deal with this base. 
The level one spawner goes down pretty well, but the level two spawners uh, take a hell of a lot of uh, killing. We need some more armor piercing, basically. We're going to have to get that green science production up straight away next episode and try and deal with this biter problem. Because, yeah, I, I, I don't know how I'm going to deal with it, really. This could be a very short series and, and I'm going to have to start again. But we shall see. We shall see. This is uh, big on the agenda for next episode. I've been thinking about it quite a bit since recording this. We could potentially run out of, of any resources sufficient enough to get more resources. So we place some more turrets around the Sapphirite just in case and remove a miner. And clearly the Sapphirite is running out. Oh uh, yeah, we can get back to our production for now. The attack seems to have stopped up there. Yet again, spacing for beacons because I'm a madman. And this bus is going to be extremely long. Very similar design to the tin copper wire. I think I get the ratio wrong to begin with. I realise and then place it out properly. Hopefully that's correct. And if it's not, uh, hopefully someone will tell me. Because uh, this is how I've done it in my other bobs. Or other bob spaces. There's, there's more than one. I can tell you. Uh, so we get the power laid out. It's a bit weird uh, with these poles. But we'll, uh, we can clear that all up once we uh, get the new ones. And we also place the input of resources for the uh, basic circuits which are reduced down on the sub bus that's basically how the sub bus works uh, but yeah so there's a lot of red on the map need to decide what i'm going to do no sapphire insight anywhere trust me i've scanned the map but yeah that's going to be all we have time for this episode i'm going to be dealing with this this problem hopefully in the next episode but yeah i uh, i hope you have enjoyed most importantly thank you for watching i'll see you guys next time bye bye